Now we'll discuss about the pharyngeal arch. Pharyngeal arches you have seen in previous lectures. series of thickening in cranial part of developing foregut. This is endodermal lining. This is ectoderm, ectodermal lining. This is first, second, first, second, third, fourth, and sixth arch. Internally lined by endoderm, externally outside, this is ectodermal line. Here you can see a series of groove. This is groove, this is groove. There will be two adjacent arches. This is groove, this is groove. A series of groups are present. These groups are known as pharyngeal cleft. So this is first pharyngeal cleft, this is second, this is third, this is fourth pharyngeal cleft. This pharyngeal cleft, first cleft forms the external acoustic meatus. This is covering or the epithelial lining of the external acoustic meatus. So this first group forms the epithelial lining of the external acoustic meatus. And second, third, fourth cleft are covered by here is second pharyngeal arch. It grows faster than other arches. Like this. And here it joins with. So it, the second pharyngeal arch, overhang and covers this second, third, fourth cleft. This is known as, this part is known as cervical sinus. This is cervical sinus. After some time, this cervical sinus become obliterated. This become obliterated. But in some cases, here a cyst or small sinus is present. If cyst is present, then cyst is known as. If cyst is present here. This is known as branchial cyst. And if here is sinus is present, then sinus is known as branchial sinus. So, and position of the branchial cyst or branchial sinus, it lies just anterior to sternocleidomastoid muscle. Just anterior to sternocleidomastoid muscle here. So this is branchial cysta, branchial sinus. So this is all about the
pharyngeal cleft. This is pharyngeal cleft. Thank you. Now we will discuss about the pharyngeal pouches. Here this is endodermal lining. This endodermal lining here between two adjacent mesodermal thickness form the pouch. So this is first pouch, this is first pouch, this is second, this is third, this is fourth pouch. What is the what is the fate of these pouches? So here you can see this is dorsal part of first and also second this is mesodermal thickening between first and second so this is first this is second pouch ventral part of second pouch forms the this is tonsil this is you can see in this diagram this is first pouch this is second pouch this is third pouch this is fourth pouch some part of fifth pouch is also joined with this this is tubo tympanic recess this is dorsal part of the first and second pouch firmly this recess this is known as tubo tympanic recess it forms middle ear cavity auditory tube and part of tympanic membrane here this you can see this is second this is this is first and second dorsal part this is ventral part of the second this is ventral part of second it form the tonsil this is tonsil This is third. Dorsal part of the third form the parathyroid. This is parathyroid third. And its ventral part extends into the neck and also in the thoracic region. This is thymus. So this is thymus of one side. This thymus joins with the thymus of opposite side like this. And these two joins with each other. And the thing here is This is parathyroid. Fourth. And this is lateral thyroid. This is lateral thyroid. So fourth. Dorsal part of the fourth form the parathyroid four. And ventral part form the lateral thyroid this lateral thyroid this joins with the thyroid gland and it also forms the ultimobranchial body here parafollicular cells or C cells are present 
So these structures derive from pouches. First, second, third, fourth. First, second, third, fourth pharyngeal pouches. Thank you. Now we'll discuss about the parathyroid gland. We have seen here is parathyroid third, here is parathyroid fourth. These parathyroids glands, here is position of thyroid gland. Suppose this is thyroid gland. It has two lobes. This is thyroid gland. It develops from thyroblastal duct on the posterior side. This is posterior view of thyroid gland. Here is position of this is parathyroid 4. So, this is level of the parathyroid 4 and this is level of parathyroid 3. This is cranial to this In parathyroid 3 and Parathyroid fourth, third or fourth, this is fourth. This incorporate here in thyroid gland. This parathyroid four from the superior parathyroid. This is superior parathyroid. So this is superior parathyroid, and this. Parathyroid 3, which is cranial to this, it descends along with thymus and occupy position below to this. It descends here. So it descends from here and occupies this position. This is inferior. Parathyroid. So, this is all about the development of the parathyroid gland.